Hi everyone, it's Jack from Jack's English and today we've got a lesson for the grammar lovers. We're looking at passive voice. Actually, this was a le lesson that was requested by one of my students on this channel. So for all of you other students and subscribers, please, if you have anything you want me to cover, let me know in the comment section and I do try to make videos for my subscribers. So, as I said today, we're looking at the passive voice and I want to answer three questions today. Firstly, what is it? How do we use it? And when do we use it in daily life? So, if I can answer those three questions and you understand, we've done very well today. Okay, let's start today's class, which is the passive voice. So the first question we need to answer today is what is passive voice? But to answer that question we must first understand an actor and a receiver. What is an actor and receiver? So let's look at a very simple example. I tap the whiteboard. I tap the whiteboard. In this sentence here I'm the actor. I do this action. Tap. The whiteboard is the receiver. It receives my tap. So, very simply, actor, receiver. Let's look at, at this sentence I prepared here. The professor teaches students. The professor, as we can see here, is the actor. The professor does this action. The students are the receivers. They receive this action. Simple sentence, actor and receiver. Now notice the actor is in the subject position. And this is the most common case. To have the actor in the subject position is by far the most common and it's called the active voice. Maybe you've heard that many times. It's the opposite of what we're studying today. So let's look at the passive voice. In this case here, again, we have the actor and receiver, the information hasn't changed. All we've done is swap the actor and receiver, and now we've put the receiver in the subject position. So, students are taught by the professor. Same information, the students receive this action, the professor does this action. The only difference is, is we've swapped the receiver and actor. Now, receiver is in the subject position, and this is our first example today of the passive voice. So, hopefully, that helps you to understand what it is. Now, let's look at how we use it, the structure that we need to use to use the passive voice. Okay, here's the tricky part how to use the passive voice, how to make a sentence with the passive voice. So, the first step is easy. We already understand the receiver and actor. Simply, we've got to put the receiver in the subject position. Easy. The hard part is this here. Now, firstly, here's what we need to do. It's the B plus past participle. The first thing you must remember is we are always going to use past participle with the passive voice. So as soon as you use the passive voice, you know you've got to have the past participle. In this case, taught, eaten, drunk, and done. These are some examples. You also need to always use the be verb. But the be verb changes depending on the tense, depending on the tense of the sentence. So in our first example, we said the professor teaches students. Teachers is the present simple. So, this be verb must also be in the present simple, in this case, are. Taught is the past participle, so we combine that to make are taught. Let's look at some other examples, because this is quite hard. Imagine I, I eat an apple. I eat an apple. Well, eat is the present simple, so we must do the present simple of be. So, the apple is eaten by me. Next, 
I drank a cola. I drank a cola. Drank is the past simple, so we must do the past simple of B. So the cola was drunk by me. Finally, I'm doing my homework. Doing is the present continuous, which is the ing, verb ing. So in this case, the present continuous of B is being, so is being done. My homework is being done by me. So just remember, the first part is easy. You've got the receiver in the subject position. This here is always going to be B plus past participle. So this is always the same. It's the past participle, but this B changes depending on the tense. Finally, you've got the actor here, and you must introduce the actor with this preposition by. So that's the structure. Now let's look at how we use it and when we use it in our daily life. So finally, when do we use the passive voice? There are three main ways. Number one is the receiver is important. Sometimes we don't care about the actor. The receiver is the important thing. So in the first one, I was promoted. The actor is probably the manager. He promoted me. But I don't care about the manager. When I tell my friends or family this news, I'm the important one. So I say, I was promoted. Next, he was attacked by two men. We don't care about the two men. We care about he, the victim, the person who received the attack. So we put the two men at the end as the, as the object. So he is the important one. Next, unknown actor. I was followed home. Now, an unknown actor is when well, simply we don't know who the actor is, so we eliminate them. In this case, I was followed home. By who? I don't know. I don't know who the actor is, so I eliminate them. Same here. My dog was found in the park. Who found my dog? I don't know, so I don't include them in the sentence. My dog is the receiver and he's in the subject position. Finally, and perhaps the hardest, is less direct speaking. Less direct speaking is saying something without attacking someone and you're saying it more politely or softer. It's the opposite of a finger pointing statement. A finger pointing statement is you did it. You made a mistake. If you use a finger pointing statement, we feel bad. So sometimes we don't want to use that. We use the passive voice. So look at this. The package was delivered late. We could say you delivered the package late, but then the person feels bad. So sometimes we save their feeling with this kind of sentence. This one, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Imagine in a business meeting, we don't want to say in front of everyone, you made a mistake. We say mistakes were made and everyone's feeling is saved. So these are the three ways that we use passive voice. I'd say this one is kind of unique and it's a little harder, but you will hear this. These two you'll hear very often. And sometimes a sentence could be one or the other and it could be both. So don't worry, don't worry about trying to divide, but try to understand these three uses of the passive voice. Okay, that's the end of quite a difficult class. I think the passive voice is a very difficult subject and that's why one of my subscribers asked for this lesson. Try to think of this lesson as the first step. Hopefully I've helped you to understand what it is. We looked at the actor and the receiver and then we looked at how to make the structure. And then of course, we looked at when we use it. So try to take this video as the first step. And now try to study that structure. You can find on Google the images, so many examples of the structure. And then take that and look for the passive voice in the real world. Now, I'll give you an extra tip for that. For speaking, we don't use it much at all. 
You know, when you watch any drama, you're not going to hear passive voice all the time. But, you know, this example here, like I was promoted, that's a typical example in speaking. But we do use it a lot in the news because we talk about celebrities or presidents. They receive something, an action, maybe attack or something like that. So they are always in the subject position because they're important. So as I said, take this video as a first step, practice the structure, look for this in the news, and I think you'll become more comfortable with it. So I hope you enjoyed today's class. As always, please comment if you have any questions, I will answer them. And I'll be back soon with more about time and Sherlock. So have a great day and see you soon.